Okay, today is uh, 30 July 05. We're at the New York State Military Museum in Saratoga Springs and we're conducting an interview. My name is Wayne Clark and for the record, sir, would you please state your name and uh, your date of birth? First name is Edward. The second name is, the middle initial is J. And last name is uh, Glowaski. It's spelled G-L-O-W-A-S-K-I. And uh, what is your date of birth? 12, 24, 20. And whereabouts were you born? New York City. Okay. And uh, is that where you grew up and went to school? Yes. Okay. And uh, what did your parents do for a living? Uh, they owned an apartment house. Okay. And uh, uh, w do you remember where you were and what your reaction was when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Yes. Uh, I was employed by the American Lo Locomotive, Alco, American Locomotive Company in New York City at the time. And that Sunday, I, I was quite an ice skater, so that Sunday I was waiting online to do some ice skating in the New York City Center, which was part of the 1939 World's Fair. And there was quite a rumbling uh, while waiting online. And when we got in to the ice skating rink, uh, the PA announced that all men in service to report to their uh, stations immediately. And I didn't realize what happened until I got home and uh, obtained the info from the radio. Okay. And uh, now, were you drafted or did you volunteer? I was drafted. Okay. Um, how soon after Pearl Harbor? Well, as soon as the Pearl Harbor, I was uh, I registered, of course, with the draft board. Okay. And uh, since I worked for the American Locomotive Company, we were uh, doing a lot of defense work, uh, such as uh, um, uh, uh, parts for Liberty ships, uh, doing the piping for oil refineries, and also uh, establishing. Um, um, uh, a plant which produced uh, 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 a uh, product to replace uh, 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 rubber. And so the draft board decided that um, uh, the, the, the draft board decided my work at, at the company, at the American Locomotive was, was important, so they gave me a six months deferment. I see. They gave me another six months deferment, and then another six month deferment, then three months, then two months, and one month. Finally, I was um, drafted into the service on October. Now, did you pick the Navy, or did they place you in the Navy? Uh, they gave me a choice of uh, various services. Mm -hmm starting with the uh, Marines and, the, and then the Air Force and finally I wanted, I selected the Navy. Any particular reason why you chose the Navy? Because as a kid I, I liked building Navy boats and at that time the popular science was a very popular science with a very popular magazine and there was an individual by the name of Theodore Gomi, this is all coming back to me, G-O-M-M-I who, who built, uh, who drew plans of various naval ships in a very, very small scale mm -hmm. to fit in an eight and a half by 11 magazine. And I, I built aircraft carriers, and I built uh, destroyers, four stackers, and I even brought the models to school as an exhibit at the, um, and uh, I, and that's how I got involved with them, with the Navy. Okay. And I selected it. Okay. And uh, whereabouts did you go for your initial training? Uh, I went to uh, Samson Naval Base in New York, New York State. Okay. What was the training like? It was, uh, I think, a, a six six week period of training. It was. Um, Mostly discipline, I assume, and, and uh, marching mm -hmm. shots, 
proper shots. I'm taking tests. Was it your first time away from home? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, Samson, at, at the time, that was a fairly new uh, training base, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. Did you um, did you sleep in beds or hammocks or? We slept in double 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 beds, okay. one above each other. Okay. And uh, did you get to fire any weapons while you were at Samson? No, I did not. Okay. All right. Once you completed your training at Samson, whereabouts did you go from there? Went to Little Creek, Virginia. Okay. And, and what kind of training did you receive? And that was the amphibious base. Uh, I went to a coxswain school there, and uh, uh, it was uh, a lot of seamanship courses and uh, knots tying, various types of knots. Okay. For for those who might not be aware of what a coxswain does, can you? Explain that for us. Well, the coxswain is uh, one that's um, uh, in charge of the top side mm -hmm. from the main deck and above, uh, and, and, and all its functions, repairs, maintenance, uh, various anchor details, uh, gangway details, uh, being in charge of a four, four hour watch, uh, which included. Uh, uh, seamen that would uh, be in the quartermaster would steer the ship. So basically you had to be a jack of all trades, pretty um, much. Uh, for, as far as topside is concerned, yes. Okay. Mm. Okay, now, now how long were you there? I got, let me say about uh, three or four months, I believe. Okay. Mm. Okay. And, and then uh, where did you go from there? Were you assigned to a ship? Or? Yes, I was assigned to uh, a ship uh, in Boston, Quincy, Massachusetts. Uh, after being in Little Creek, uh, <coughs> I was given a uh, two weeks leave and from there went to Quincy, Mass. I was quartered at the Wells Fargo building, which is a receiving station, Navy receiving station in Boston. And we picked up our ship at the, at the uh, Falls River uh, uh, shipbuilding yard in Quincy, Massachusetts. Okay. What Was that a new ship? Yes. So you're, you're what's known as a plank holder? Yes. Okay. And the name of that ship was? USS LST 1005. Now, what does LST stand for? Uh, landing ship tanks. Okay. It was the largest amphibious ship in the United States Navy. All right. And uh, did you go on a, uh, like a shakedown cruise? The shakedown cruise, yes, was from um, Quincy, Massachusetts, down the East Coast, and down to Little Creek. Okay. Any problems at all with it? Well, we hit heavy seas, and most everybody on board ship got seasick. Uh -huh. uh, for some reason, I didn't. Uh, and uh, a lot of um, equipment on topside came loose because of the heavy seas and the rolling. Mm -hmm. And we had to um, make sure everything was secured. It was a rough trip. Okay. For the first trip. All right. Now, was that still 1943? Uh, let me just look at my notes here. Mm -hmm. Nineteen forty-four, April. Oh, okay. The ship was commissioned. Okay, and. Uh, once the shakedown cruise was completed, whereabouts did you go from there? Uh, we were assigned to be uh, a training flotilla to train nucleus uh, uh, LST crews so they would pick up their ship and, and, uh, 
and uh, um, events proceed to, I, I think most, quite a lot of the crews that we trained partook in the D-Day invasion of uh, France and, uh, and also quite a few picked up their ships and uh, partook in the various um, uh, island invasions in the Pacific. We were really a floating school from nucleus crews. Okay. Um, were you involved in the D-Day invasion at all? I was not. Okay. Uh, most of this, uh, this training that was done, was that primarily on the, the East Coast? Yes. Okay. And uh, how long were you involved in the, in the training aspect? Was that for very long? Uh, probably, I think maybe six to nine months. Okay. And then where did you go from there? Uh, after which we were fitted with uh, pontoons on the side of our LST and uh, we had two additional small boats secured to the bow of the ship, at the bow of the ship, and we had an LCT, a landing craft tank, which is a, a, a smaller amphibious uh, craft secured to our top side. Okay. And from there we uh, plus 16-inch shells in our tank deck, filled completely with shells. And we headed south, stopped off at Cuba, uh, Gitmo Bay, then down to Cologne, where we waited a few days before we went through the canal, and then to Hawaii for a short while. Now when you uh, reached Hawaii, could you s still see evidence of the attack at Pearl Harbor? Uh, not really. Okay. I didn't see any of it, no. Okay. And uh, you were just in Hawaii for a brief period of time? A short period of time, yes. Okay. And uh, where did you go next? And then we stopped off at the Caroline Islands. Okay, um, at the Carolinas, did you um, pick up any sort of equipment or drop things, drop supplies off, or what exactly? Not did yet. You know? We were there as a stopover. Okay. And then from there, we went to the Marshall Islands. Uh, I think Ulithi was part of that, uh, part of the Marshall Island group. Okay. And. Um, I think it was there that we um, uh, had the LCT slide off our deck into the water, and that's and I think uh, uh, I, I think it was there. Uh, of course, also also you you the islands uh, was probably the largest. Navy anchorage at that time in the Pacific, mm -hmm. uh, and it also was used as a recreational uh, place for the sailors um, to have some fun. Uh, we'd go ashore and play softball, and uh, like an R and R center. Yes, and uh, we were permitted to uh, drink beer, and that was, uh, and it was there that uh, my future brother-in-law, who was on the USS Sabine, which was the AL-25 of, of uh, oil tanker, uh, in that vast amount of ships there, uh, I contacted him uh, through the um, uh, signal, signal department there, and uh, I met him on board my, uh, he came on board my ship and we had uh, we had dinner. Oh. It was, it was a, 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 quite a coincidence. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Must have been a nice reunion. Yes. And then she was much older at the time, but he, uh, a couple of years older. And uh, he was accrued enough points that when he, when he got home, he 
as the waiter ran that, we were all well, so uh -huh. that was comforting. Now, what was his name? Michael Frank, F-R-A-N-K. Okay. Now, you mentioned that uh, the LCT slid off the deck. Did it sink? No. Uh, the ship was, um, was tilted by adjusting the water ballast, okay. and the LCT could carry two tanks and some personnel. Uh, it slid at an angle and was on probably 12 by 12 timbers and was secured to the deck by uh, cable. And the bosun mate uh, with, a, with a, um, a hatchet uh, took one good swing at the cable, broke the cable, a part of the cable, and the ship just slid into the water. And we had the LST crew on board our ship during the entire trip, so they took over on there. Okay. And uh, whereabouts did you go next? Uh, we went to the Philippine Islands. Uh -huh. uh, we were at Manila, we were at Dulag, and a couple of other. Uh, and. Um, what, what were, primarily, what were you doing? Point. We were getting ready for the invasion of Japan. Okay. All right. Which never happened because the. So at this point, this is late 1945. Yes. Okay. And um, um, do you remember where you were when you heard about the dropping of the atomic bombs? Yes, I was um, on my ship in one of the small staterooms, one of the small uh, compartments. I was developing some film at the time, and we heard about it. What was your reaction to that? Did you have any idea what an atomic bomb no, was? No, I had no idea. Uh -huh. But uh, as days went by, and uh, we found out more about it uh, and the, the power of the bomb and what it did. Uh, we thought it would be the end of the war. Mm -hmm. Now, let me go back a little bit. Uh, do you remember where you were and what your reaction was when you heard about the death of President Roosevelt? You're probably out in the Pacific somewhere. Mm -hmm. We had assassinations in the history of the United States before, and the and the uh, the continuity of the government continued, and there was no interruption. And I and I thought that um, that the same thing would hold true then, mm -hmm. that the government would run smoothly and efficiently as it did before. Okay. Now, soon after they they dropped the bombs, uh, of course, the war ended. What was it like on the ship at that point? Was there a lot of celebration? It was, yes, well, there was jubilation. I mean, uh, uh, the dropping of the bomb, or after the... Uh, after, after the war had ended. When the war Short ended, uh, um, uh, when the news, the news of the uh, ending of the war uh, arrived, uh, I think all the ships in the harbor, with whatever fire, uh, fireworks they had, uh, Flares and uh, and um, all kinds of mechanical um, colorings uh, just emitted. Uh, we shot up into the sky from all the ships, and it was like a gala celebration. Mm -hmm. They all partook at the same time. Mm. Okay. Mm. Now, did you get to go into Japan at all? Yes. All right. What was that like? And how, how soon after the war ended did you go into Japan? Probably, as a uh, I would say a few weeks after the war was over. Okay. And, now, what was that like? When you went, did, did you actually get to go off, off the ship onto land? Yes, yeah. Uh, my first uh, uh, viewing of Japan was the, yeah, the, the, the big mountain they had there. Yeah. 
because even before we, uh, before we, Mount Fuji, Mount Fuji, that just, just protruded above the clouds, and you could just see it from a distance. And uh, we landed at Yokosuka Naval Base, mm -hmm. and we were part of the occupation forces, and we were just allowed uh, uh, to to um, to leave the naval base. Um, just for a few hours, from about maybe 12 o'clock until 4 o'clock, we had to be back. And we stayed at the Yokosuka Naval Base. Mm -hmm. Did you have any uh, interaction with the Japanese people? Um, after, after a while, uh, uh, we were permitted to, to walk the streets. And uh, I noticed uh, that every, at that time I was smoking at that, and, and uh, and, and any any sale that was smuggled would flip the uh, the button in the street, and the and the, the Japanese would be right behind us picking it up and salvaging the tobacco. Hmm. And um, when I would uh, stop in at the Red Cross for a cup of coffee uh, in, in the morning, the, the little Japanese kids would be outside the uh, the canteen, and I was always would give them a cookie and a, and a buck or so. Because they were, they were really in bad shape, mm -hmm. and most of them did live in in tin huts, which uh, which were just two by fours, uh, and to which the um, I guess they call them the five gallon gasoline uh, uh, cans were were flattened out and nailed up against the uh, and that was their shelter. And when I'd walk the streets, the uh, the soldiers would uh, either um, uh, face the wall and with their back to me, or they would walk in the street to, uh, to allow me to pass, or mm -hmm. reverence, as the, you know, I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say conquering, uh, but that we were there as occupation forces. Okay. <clears throat> now, how long were you there for? Uh, I was discharged in... Discharged in uh, March of '46. Uh, I would say until about February or March of '46. Okay. So you spent you spent quite a bit of time in Japan. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did you uh, get to see more of the country, or were you just in the same area primarily? No. Uh, uh, we rode there, met there, there. Uh, Railroad system. Mm -hmm. uh, I went. I uh, we spent some time at an R and R camp. Uh, I visited uh, that the, the huge statue in Kamakuri, I believe it was, uh, which was a uh, um, massive, <coughs> which was a mass massive. Uh, uh, statue which the Japanese, I understand, uh, adored or praised to. Mm -hmm. I just forget the name of it. Now, did you uh, get to see Hiroshima or Na Nagasaki at all? No, I didn't. But we uh, we did um, hike, uh, take hikes into the uh, into the mountains, uh, and. Process of doing so, we would meet the Japanese doing the same thing, and we were very courteous to each other and mm -hmm. uh, and very polite. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, after you left Japan, you went straight back to the states. Uh, came back on the uh, USS 169. I think it was the Golden Gate troop ship, and landed in. Seattle, uh, state of Washington, and from there boarded a troop train in the Northern Northern um, Railroad, Northern Railroad route to um, New York City, uh, Lido Beach in Long Island, which is my discharge center. Right. Uh, 
Once you got out of the service, uh, did you uh, take advantage of the GI Bill at all? Uh, rather belatedly, I did. Yes. Okay. Did you use the uh, the 5220 club at all? I only used it for about two weeks. Okay. All right. And uh, you said you did make use of the GI Bill. What did you What did you do? Did you uh, go back to school or? Well, uh, I was talked into taking the ICS course, the International Correspondence okay. School course in uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania, Mechanical Engineering. I took that for about uh, under the GI Bill and that was uh, very time consuming and a lot of uh, homework, especially doing correspondence course and doing most of the work at night. And I had, uh, I probably completed about 85, 95 percent of it. And uh, I was not aware that uh, a degree, that, well, I was not aware that I would receive a degree. It was just the fact that I attended it and I had, uh, um, uh, I would get some, some certificate, but not a, a degree which would be accepted by society. Mm -hmm. So I went back to, um, Went back to school when I was 45, I believe, 45, 40, 45, to a community college. And I got an associate's degree in construction technology. Okay. Um, did you join any veterans organizations at all? No, I did not. Okay. Have you ever attended any reunions? I, I attend a reunion every year, which is the LST Association uh, uh, reunion. This year it's being held in Norfolk, Virginia. Okay. It's great because it gives you an opportunity to visit many, uh, probably a different city in the United States every year. So you've main co maintained contact with some of the fellows you, you were in the service with? Yes. Okay. Um, how do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life? Well, uh, number one, I... Uh, I would have not traveled as much as I if I didn't join the Navy. Um, it, uh, it it gave me uh, it, it uh, made me more mature to the fact that uh, the ability to take orders and and the ability to give orders um, there's a wonderful feeling that uh, 128 people from all parts of the United States would get together and work as a unit mm -hmm. with one objective and work as a team. Okay. Um, now, did you have any photographs or anything you wanted to show us? I have a picture here of myself which uh, which would appear in the LST. Okay, if you can hold that up right in front of you, I can, I can zoom in on it. Now, is that the upper picture? Okay. Which is a picture oh, okay. I see that. that uh, the LSC Association wanted a before and after. Okay. Now that uh, picture before, was that taken at Sampson? I was taken in New York City after my boot camp. Okay. All right. I got it. Now is there uh, anything else that you've got there to show us? I have a copy of a discharge card. Oh, okay, I can I can focus in on that. All right. Now, uh, well, I forgot to ask you. Did you ever get to see any uh, USO shows when you were in the service? Uh, at Ulithi. At the Ulithi Islands, uh, a big time band, Dick Jerkins, entertained us. Uh, he, he was very prominent in Chicago um, and he played quite a lot in the Palmer, Palmer House in, the, uh, in one of the hotels there. Um, that was the only U.S. show that I saw. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add to the interview? Yes, I have a large a picture here of my um, ship. Okay, great. Well, that 
is a pretty good sized ship, isn't it? Yes, it is. It was really a floating warehouse with no keel, it was flat bottom, being an amphibious ship. Mm -hmm. Now, did you uh, experience any of the, the typhoons at all? Uh, I experienced one, yes. Mm -hmm. And I was in the wheelhouse at the time. And the waves were so massive, it would just Forty, fifty, side, exaggerated. I mean, sixty feet high. When they hit the uh, hit the bow of the ship, there was a lot of, of course, water weighs around sixty-two and a half pounds a cubic foot. Mm -hmm. And when it hit the deck, the, where I was in the wheelhouse, it was just like placing a uh, placing a, uh, a hacksaw blade on a table at one end and vibrating it, and the blade would the ship would go up and down. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue. And there were times I wonder whether the ship would still be intact. But the ship was all welded, so there was a lot of elasticity and a lot of give and take. Mm -hmm. And um, it, was, uh, it, 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 uh, uh, it really took a beating. And I was in a wheelhouse in charge of that section that was on watch. And I, I had the wheel at the time, and the, uh, the captain would shout, would give them orders for left full rudder, mm -hmm. and I would say left full rudder, Captain. And I steered the ship so it was full left rudder. And about a minute or so later, the captain shouted down, "God damn it, Glowasi!" I said left full rudder, and I said, "Captain, uh, it is full left rudder, and we're going in the in a, in a, in a right in the opposite direction." So I I, I think. Um, through the captain's maneuvering, because he was a Mustang, and he and and he. Uh, what do you mean by the term Mustang? Mustang is a uh, is, is an individual that joins the Navy as an enlisted man and has come up through the ranks uh, to become an officer. Okay. So before the war was over, he was a retired quartermaster chief, and when the war began, uh, he was asked to come back, and uh, he was made the captain of our ship. A very, uh, very wise choice. He was a good captain. Okay. Um, anything else you'd like to add? Mm, no, not really. No. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your interview. My pleasure. Now, do you recall what happened to your t ship? Yes. After the uh, war was over, and we were stationed in uh, in uh, Yokosuka Bay, we were ordered to go to H Hokkaido which is the northernmost island in Japan. Oh, okay. To, to return personnel or supplies, I don't know, um, of the two. But we beached on the northern, the, uh, the, southern, uh, the southern tip of Hokkaido. And the, um, and the surf was so severe that uh, it was not only our ship, quite a few LSTs beached, but the surf was so severe that the, the tail end or the, the stern of the ships were banging into each other. And uh, our starboard rear end, our uh, port rear end, that's the, uh, the left side, was so heavily damaged that uh, it, it just tore the, uh, the, the skin of the ship apart so you could see in the inst you can, you can see the uh, inside of the uh, ship. Mm -hmm. and we went back to Japan. Uh, it was decided that the ship was not, wor not worthy anymore. And um, all the uh, all items that were salv salvageable were sal salvaged. And the ship was towed out. And I think it, it was either sunk or was used as gunnery practice. And it's down in the bottom of the sea somewhere. That's These ships. About a thousand, maybe more than a thousand, were built, uh, but they were not built in consecutive order. Mm -hmm. uh, certain shipyards were given a consignment of ships numbers 900 and 950, and in other parts of the United States it was different numbers. So the ships not, were not built in numerical order, but uh, about a thousand plus were built, and they were all expendable. And uh, they served their purpose during the war. And, uh, um, and uh, the, the, uh, their only um, 
mo most of the ships were destroyed. Others were sold to to for other uh, foreign countries, governments. Uh, foreign governments, and in particular uh, Greece. And LST was sold to Greece. They used it and uh, was used in their navy, and they found it expendable and it was rusting in in uh, in, in Greece. And the uh, members uh, sales that straight on board an LST decided to get together and they bought the ship from the Greek Navy and against the Coast Guard's will uh, uh, they they brought the ship back across the Atlantic and now it is one of probably the only one I know that is um, still in good condition uh, and I think its headquarters is stationed in Mobile, Alabama mm -hmm. and if you're a member of an LST uh, you could uh, volunteer, drive down, or, or visit the Mobile, and, and perhaps donate one week of, uh, of your time uh, refurbishing the ship. Uh, a lot of electricians, boiler makers, welders, uh, iron structural men would work on board ship and put it in shape. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, well thank you very much. You're very welcome.